Hi, Kim. Hi, Frank. Um, I'm so glad um, you're joining me today. Uh, we were just discussing two minutes ago about the fact that I, I really fell in love with your music about a month ago. Um, so uh, it's, it's so good to have, you, um, to have you on. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so happy my track um, found you. Yeah, it found, I mean, I mean, the track found me, but then all the others also found me. So it's, uh, I've been found. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Um, I'm glad it's yeah, reaching yeah. the, the I, I'm glad it's reaching awesome people. Like that's, that's what matters to me. I'm like, okay. So very awesome. So yeah, that, let's talk about sort of what, what matters to you. Um, you, um, in one of the, in one of the lyrics of, uh, of, um, is it stars now? I forgot, but anyway, um, mm -hmm. you, it says like you, you honored to be part of the planet mm. and actually in your lyrics, you know, mm. earth, the moon, the sky, mm. the sea, you know, mm. co you know, it comes up a lot, you know, so, mm. um, I was wondering how important it was for you or what you what you meant in a way when you say like i'm honored to be on this planet oh my gosh well um i definitely when i wrote that song stars um i was in a place where i was processing intergenerational trauma in my family i'm filipino and um i was also processing mental health and lots of things on earth don't make sense so i was looking up to the stars and i was learning about cosmology watching a lot of the cosmos and finding a lot of almost like solace looking up at the stars and thinking about how there's so many planets and stars that we don't even have names for and how that really puts being human into perspective of like, we don't have all the answers. And um, yet we feel this pressure to understand and know everything and feel that um, almost like feel the dominance of like, big headed humans, humanness. And so when I wrote stars, I was thinking about like my place as a musician and an artist how I honor my ancestors through my music, how I'm continuing that legacy, and um, how through music, I'm learning about myself and the people around me. So that's why I wrote Stars, and it opens up my second album, X Marks the Swirl, and that um, to open up the album, it was almost like a declaration of like, I'm here, I'm a star, I'm made of stars, and you're a star too. You're made of stars. What's your story? It's uh, yeah. It's an amazing song for for people that don't know it. You should really like check it out. I I, I love it. And as I told you, Kim, I've had it in my head for like about four <laughs> or five days. <laughs> you know, like nonstop. And um, but you think you've just said like you know it sort of puts things into perspectives in a way, and that like us humans don't have all the answers. But do you think that's part of the problem that some humans think they've got all the answers? Yeah, I think it's like, wow, I didn't think to talk about like human psychology, Frank. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, um, no, sorry, because I, I sent yeah, you a list so, of questions. Yeah, but totally. now like I, 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 I listen to I listen to your album like all day and it it yeah. made me want to talk about other stuff. And as I told totally. you, it's very casual. And we'll come back to the questions For I sure. sent you, promise. Oh, yeah, totally. Okay, back to your question around like, yeah, there is a pressure to like try to, I think that I think we have to be aware of like how power can corrupt us, you know, and how like a lot of that lust for power, greed, money, control, we can get lost in that. Like, 
I feel like so much of this planet and like land issues are interpersonal dynamics. So much of it can be corrupted by this lust for power and that fear is dominating so much of what, of how this, or, or, or the lack of care for others and land and yeah. So yeah, I think that that needs to come to a rest, <laughs> you know? Uh, yeah, for sure. And uh, I don't know if you know this quote, which says like power corrupts, absolute power corrupts absolutely. Um, I can't remember who said that, but it's, it feels very uh, totally. true when you look, yeah. when you look at uh, political leaders and stuff like that, you know, mm -hmm. um, but um, I'm, uh, I, I want to I want to stick to like Earth and planet Earth for a bit because <laughs> you uh, you um, you're very connected to this planet we we live on and that you know a lot of um, communities and a lot of like First Nations communities refer to as more, you know Mother Earth. I um I traveled a bit, you know, and I I remember every time you meet like First Nations in a way in 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 Chile, in the U.S., in Australia and stuff, they've got this link to the earth that is sacred, and this mm -hmm. and because it's sacred, they cherish it, they protect mm -hmm. it, mm -hmm. and I think a lot of people in that have been corrupted by capitalism forget about how important planet earth it is don't you think absolutely yeah um that that thought is very much like i think about um my roots as filipino and um how even the word Philippines was actually named by King Philip of Spain, who was like 16 I, I or 17. Yeah, he was 16 or 17. He went to the beautiful islands of the, of the quote, Philippines, um, and was like, oh, these are beautiful, lush, lust, flor uh, flora, flora. This is beautiful. Yeah. I'm going to name it after myself. So he names it after <laughs> himself, right? And it's like, so even the, the origin story of like the Philippines is, um, is quite a mystery. Mm. And I've, I, I was born in Vancouver, Canada, um, where I, where I'm from, I'm actually living on sacred land. So this is indigenous territory. This is the land of Skohomish people, Musqueam people, Tsleil-Waututh people. And that's just a tiny region of Vancouver. Canada's huge. Um, and my journey learning about the land I'm on has also um, been happening with like how I learn about the Philippines. And every time I learn something new and um, yeah, I, I feel like just like learning about the names of even where I'm from, like, like where my mom is from has a different dialect than where my dad is from. But the, the it's a Tagalog centric land the philippines because the colonizer said let's choose one language that'll make it easier for us to control you know so it's all about control back to that thing of of, of power is like homogenizing an entire people for control of land of resources it's this it's a very connected story to what's happening all around the world and um so yeah it um Part of my journey, part of a lot of people's journey around me is like reconnecting to land, which we are the land too. Cause I think there's that narrative too, that like, oh yeah, you know, humans are the scum of the earth or whatever, but we're also the land and like we live off the land and those connections have been disconnected because of this harmful way of understanding um, all these connections. You know, so yeah, 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 totally. And do you do you feel like um, you know you talked about First Nations communities in 
in Vancouver, do you feel um, inspired by them? Do you feel yeah, definitely connected in a way or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, so I started off in, like, I went to visual art school. And when I was in visual art school, I was always in my silos for five years, painting, painting, painting. They're like, make a pro make five projects, six projects every week. And I was like, oh, and in order to stay sane, I had to create my own art form outside of the institution to reinvigorate my love and passion for art. So I got into spoken word poetry. That's where I met and learned of real stories uh, coming from like indigenous um, artists here in Vancouver, black indigenous artists, like queer, trans, Muslim artists, you know, all of our diverse um, stories coming through in poetry. And um, yes, I'm inspired by indigenous artists um, using art and comedy and music to as a form of reclamation and to get back to what they tried to erase. And um, yeah, I, I, it also makes me reflect on my own roots. So um, yeah. Hey, it's talking about this, like you, what, what's the, um, in your opinion, like the, the role of an artist in today's world? Yeah, on your website, you've got a few quotes. Um, one which says, the role of the artist is to make the revolution irresistible. Yes. Uh, and then there's another one from Nina yes. Simone, which says an artist's yes. duty is to reflect the times. Yes. So that first quote is by um, African American scholar, feminist playwright, Tony Cade Bambara. And it was a, I read it in a book called um, Pleasure Activism. And, um, yeah, like I, I've been thinking like the role of the artist is to make the, the revolution irresistible and Nina Simone's quote, reflect the times. Um, I feel like as an artist, I don't, I feel like I've always kind of been honest and I've come from a place where I started seeing how art can be used as fuel to fight back. And um, I'm a fighter. I'm a fire sign fighter spirit. And I don't pull any punches with my bars, with my poetry. Like I want to subvert. I love art as a means of subversion and um, as a way to disrupt. Um, being aware of the colonial narrative the, the cis, hetero, white supremacist, capitalist, colonial narrative. Um, as an artist, I'm like, oh my God, I can disrupt that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to totally do that. <laughs> you know, and just with my existence, I don't even have to create anything. I can just be. And that's also a form of existence. But for me, I love to create poetry. I perform a ton. I'm on, I'm on stage. I have the opportunity to talk to people's hearts. You know, I'm a big feeler. I feel like they're trying to, right now, in this place where we're at, right? October 7 is not where it started, right? With what's happening in Palestine. Um, right now, 10 months later or so, the feeling is burnout, right? People are burnt out, right? I'm tired, lots of people are tired and that's what they're trying to get us stuck in. And it's like, these are narratives that have been around for so long. So the question is, how do we deal with burnout? How do we reinvigorate ourselves? How do we rest and then come back to the work? And I feel like as an artist, um, I'm in the system too, that is like, they want artists to pump work out and be machines. And I'm trying to resist that because I'm, I'm in my mid thirties. I've been involved in like organizing activism and art for so long. And it's about sustainability for me because I'm going to continue to use my life force to fight colonial empire. So I need to rest and I need to rely on the community around me. And so that's like literally a rewiring of my brain. 
because they want you to think, oh, you got to solve all the problems. You have to have all the answers. You're crazy. You're stupid. Shut up. That's what they want us to fall into. So it's like we got to find ways to be sustainable and to connect because the powers up there, they're not going to do shit for us. So it's about us. And that's going to be really hard for us to like reconnect and build this thing. Right. Horizontally, there's so much energy. So yeah, I kind of went on a tangent, but it's all part of a decolonizing journey. Yeah, and it's, it's so important in, in, in movements as well. I mean, we're going to come back to this because um, it's crucial, you know, this because self care, in a way, is not, is never really, we never really think about it in movements, in, in the struggle. But I think actually more and more we do. And, and it's mm -hmm. so important because, as you said, uh, we're not going to be useful if we are on our knees, you know, and, it, and it's something um, we have to, to understand as, as, as people and it's hard. But, um, so I want to come back to this. But before, so you've mentioned October the 7th, you wrote this really amazing song called Stop Business as Usual. And that's how I, I found you, or that's how you found me, or the song, the, you know, the song found me. Uh, um, a friend of mine, a friend of mine in, uh, mine, so in, in Brussels called Nayeli's Palestinian, told me, you know, like everyone was raving about, um, shit, I lost his name now, the, the, um, the white rapper, uh, Macklemore. Yeah. Everyone was ra raving about his song, Hins Hole, which is amazing. And my friend was like, yeah, but listen to this. This is like as good, if not better. And I, I, I listened to it <laughs> and I, I loved it. I really hey. loved it. And, um, and it's so good. You know, when preparing this interview, I thought actually what we could do with Kim is go through the lyrics one by one and sort of dissect them. But cool. then I wanted to talk about a lot of other things so but I was wondering then um, if I I mean the song was released I think at the end of November mm -hmm. I was wondering when you wrote it because end of mm -hmm. November is early right mm -hmm. I mean there's mm -hmm. a lot of people that since October the 7th in the last few months have came you know came out in mm -hmm. you know asking for the genocide to stop but November is early in November there was still a lot of people are very quiet people, you know, even more so artists. Um, so I was wondering, mm. like, when did you sort of write it? Mm. How did you write it? And why mm. did you feel you, you sort of had to write it? Mm. Yes. So, so I got honestly into learning about Palestine. My learning catapulted in end of last year. So around October 7, I, cat I, I was like, boom, why social media? Social media was showing me undeniable, undeniable images, horrific. And then, um, then I started to learn like long before, um, you know, long before that, uh, Palestine existed, you know, like I was thinking about um, the history of everything. I feel like I since have learned about, um, you know, Israel recognized as a state in 48. And like, I learned about, I went deep in history. Like during that time, I felt like there's no other way to like deal right now from my apartment. I was sick with COVID. I remember. And, um, I was like, there's no other way to deal, but to like, learn and read so i was doing deep dives into like learning about even how um the philippines and the iof are connected and like i was learning about like um the history of dates of what happened in palestine um i was writing notes like that's how i deal i think that's how i deal with like the terror right that was happening and then I was watching, you know, activists 
blockading bridges in the bay. And there was one, you know, those things that they, that they cover arms with and they link arms that. Yeah. 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 So one of them said, fuck individualism. And Mm. that visual catapulted me to write the song. Cause it was like those two words, fuck individualism really gets at my role as a musician in the industry which is totally built on individualism, you know, and like just looking out for yourself. But what happened to like music to like uplift us and connect us and fuel the revolution. So I was thinking about that. And I also, um, I love like, um, education for resistance. And I I think that comes from my background in like facilitation for youth. And so I kind of like took that track and I made it a conglomerate of like all the facts I was learning. So that's really kind of where it came from. And I wanted to also like create it over a boom bat beat, um, which is like, my roots in music like that's how i got into hip-hop is i listened to a ton of boom bap i i grew up listening to like you mentioned macklemore macklemore is based in seattle which is like right below vancouver um across the imaginary border uh but i listened to everyone around macklemore so i listened to like mcs like um kings i listened to like Gabriel Teodros, I listen to Blue Scholars. These are all like great MCs, just in case there's people that are like listening and like want to look into them. But I was listening to one of my mentors, Gabriel Teodros, and the melody of the track is actually from his track. Um, uh, Light Attracts Light and Everything Else, I think is the track name. And I was just like, I made a beat and then I just hummed it looped it, got these facts, bars, and wrote. And that's where we're at. Did it kind of flow, like the writing, or was it difficult? This one flowed. And that's when you, and for me, like, that's when I know a song is not even coming from me. Like, it's like being written itself. You just got to show up, and then it happens. Um... Yeah, and it flowed so much so that I created a part two. Have you heard the part two, Frank? Yeah, 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 heard it. Yes. Yeah, it's brilliant. Amazing. I love it as well. Yeah, yeah. Yes, I made a part two that features Phoenix Pagliacci um, and Bobby Sanchez, who have been artists on social media that I've seen as like my people because they've been talking about um, what's happening in Palestine and beyond. Uh, Phoenix Pagliacci talks about um, free free Congo, free Sudan, Haiti, you know, and like um, Bobby Sanchez is indigenous from Peru and call, talks about Peru. So there's like what I wanted to do with part two is like there's more. There's like there's so much I can't just talk about. There's 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 a larger conversation. So. Hey, what was the the reception when you released? Because uh, the track is not on any of the, the albums, right? It's it's so far like because the albums were released before, right? So what was like the reaction when you really released it? Because as you as I understand, mm-hmm. you knowing and learning about Palestine is very new as well. So I guess for for people mm-hmm. that used to listen that listen to your music and stuff, I guess the Palestine track is a is a new thing for you so what what's Mm -hmm. what kind of reception did you get yeah well um when i i dropped it on instagram first before i actually released it and i just like filmed myself rapping the track and um i wrote the lyrics and the reception was really really outpouring it's probably my one of my most viewed videos and i think it was dropped at the right time when people were like, what is happening? And the track held that. And um, I'm really proud of that track too, I didn't mention, but um, 
I wanted to also reflect my community here in Vancouver that were mobilizing for Palestine. So like, um, I don't know if you said we're actually going to go into the bars, <laughs> but the lyrics, um, they're literally glimpses of what is happening in Vancouver. Like the mayor here in Vancouver lit up City Hall blue and white for Israel. Isn't that messed up? Yeah. yeah. But the people um, designed graphics, uh, mobilized online, and projected directly onto City Hall with the words Free Palestine with a projector. So it was like guerrilla projection. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I wanted to like, I wanted to reflect what's happening in Vancouver and like in this little part of the world mobilizing for Palestine. And I feel like I, I feel like um, it really hits with, with them. Um, mm. I feel like people feel it when they hear a track. They're like, oh, I feel this. Yeah. And um, yeah. And it's also, I mean, the, the title, it's just the title, right? Stop business as usual. That's what, in a way, we, we talked about capitalism and stuff. They want, they want us to, to run all the time and to, to consume. And, but, and actually, when we say, you know, in, in France, in Belgium, in Canada, in the UK, no, we, we can't go on as usual. There's a genocide going on. They, they are trying to make us look as the crazy ones, right? And this mm -hmm. is what's really fucked up. And this is what kind of, you know, this is what people have a very hard time dealing with. Because mm -hmm. it's not only about the images you see on your phone and on your TV screens and stuff. It's also the fact that the people in power, the 1%, and by people in power, I don't only mean like politicians. I mean like Elon Musk and Zuckerberg and, and, and the rest, you know. They want to make you think you alone they want to make you think you're crazy mm -hmm. and that's what's very very hard to, mm. to deal with and i think you know you talked about pleasure activism before and and i think what these people are trying to do and what the system is trying to do is to kill the joy in us you know mm -hmm. and and in a way there's so much joy in the struggle in activism mm -hmm. in being together in And I think there's been so much, you mentioned like so much creativity in the last 10 months. Mm. The, you know, the, the, you know, creative activism has, has reached its, its peak pretty much. It's been amazing. So um, I wanted to maybe wrap up with this because it's such a crucial point and we've touched upon it a bit before, but like, how do we cope with 10 months on of a genocide of the most brutal I mean, there's been genocides before, but never live on our screens. The most brutal images that can really crush people, crush your soul. Um, I was listening to another one of your track, and it's probably completely unrelated. But um, I was listening to it this morning. It's called uh, Butterfly High. And mm -hmm. um, in the track, it says, like, mm -hmm. things are going to change. Mm -hmm. It won't ever be the same. Yeah. It hits harder every single day. Yeah. Something's about to happen. Uh, I know my darkness yeah. will not go away. Yeah. Um, anyway, uh, tell me we'll be okay. And then it says, I made up my mind. I made up my mind. I'm going to put my fears aside. And I think fear is such a powerful mind killer. Then once mm -hmm. people put it aside, mm -hmm. you know, you fly, right? But mm. so when I read these lyrics and it's, you know, when you wrote it, I'm, I'm sure it was un unrelated to what's happening now. But when I read them, I felt like I feel this is a moment that hopefully is going to change everything because people have put their fears aside. But I was wondering then, how do we cope? How do you cope? We, we touch upon it a little bit, but yeah, go. Oh my gosh. Well, first of all, thank you so much for like reframing what I even thought was just a harmless R&B love song. And you totally contextualized it in the times we're in. So like, I feel like that deserves like a 10 out of 10 for like music journalism. So like, thanks, Frank. <laughs> it's, not about, it's not about music journalism, to be honest. It's about the heart, you know, totally. and, and when I listen to it, 
And I mean, there's so much, you know, we, we each, each one of us is special, right? We, 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 we don't have the, and it depends. I mean, some people are going to listen to these lyrics and it's going to touch them in, in another way. But like right now, listening to them, I was like, man, something's going to happen. I'm going to put mm -hmm. my, put my mm -hmm. fears aside. This mm -hmm. is ex exactly the moment we're in. So it's not yeah. about journalism. It's about You're right. the heart. Yes, yes. Yeah. But and thanks. Like, oh my God, totally. Well, thank you for listening to the song with your heart. Um, I feel like Butterfly High is talking about the grief that we're, we're going through. We're going through deep, deep, deep collective grief. And um, people have lost friends and relationships um, because of like this decision people make to not feel, you know, and not feel for others. And that breaks the heart. Um, and unfortunately, a lot of the world is choosing to, there's a mix. I mean, I want to try to be hopeful at the same time, but I feel like a lot of people are mobilizing for Palestine and a lot of people are also choosing not to look. And when I wrote that lyric, um, Things are going to change. It won't, it won't ever be the same, but I'm, I'm not going to choose fear. Are you going to stand by me? Are you going to come with me? You're not, I'm still going to go. I made up my mind. It's like, whose side are you on? Almost. It's like, what, what side of history do you stand on? We're in such a, we're in like unprecedented times and it's like we're part of that history okay let's go um are you coming with so yeah but at the same time too there's that grief and um how do we stay up how do we stay up oh my gosh honestly i feel like we gotta just continue to feel all of the emotions and um you were t actually you said something about like there's been such creative mobilizing at protests i feel this deep 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 love like it, there's nothing like it like you look around and you're like yeah this is like this is deep this is hitting something so deep i wish this was every day every moment kind of thing and um Yeah, I feel like that's what they're stopping us from feeling. And um, our role, not as just artists, but as humans is to like really feel and to come from that place and to not stop talking out and to hold on to life. And to remember those connections and to like really like approach things as like prayer as much as even prayer itself has been colonized so my prayerful raps my prayerful interactions my prayerful decisions in this world to serve the most oppressed and to come from that conviction because unfortunately so much can be clouded and we cannot be in that conviction. So yeah, um, feeling it all, I guess is going to be my answer. Thanks Kim. I think it's a, it's a beautiful way to, to wrap up because we, we need to remain Opt, uh, you know, optimist, you know, and we, um, I remember this very early on, like Jewish Voices for Peace um, had this like banner saying like, we owe Gaza endurance. And I think it's, it, it, it sort of, it explains it all, you know, 
it doesn't mean we we have we we have to run a sprint you know like we have to run like a 100 <laughs> yeah. meters young, you know but it's we owe them mm -hmm. endurance and it's i mean it applies to palestine it applies to, to to many other sort of struggles but um yeah the power of the collective I, i completely agree with you i've never felt so as alive as in a demonstration or in an action when you look around uh, and you see all the people and it's been incredible in the last 10 months you know you've had a lot of new people coming on board you know and i think once you've put a foot into palestine palestine is such a a, a crucial question to understand to unravel you know to understand everything else around you know what's happening in the world and stuff and once you one, once you put a foot in it it's very hard to take the foot, totally. foot out you know mm -hmm. so um so thank you kim i um i really appreciate it the time and the and the conversation thank you so much for your curiosity i see that in your work and like the the revolutionary conversations that you're offering people to reflect on is like so mm -hmm. important and i really appreciate you and what you do so thank you thanks kim thanks again no problem bye bye